सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली द मॉनसून सेशन ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इज बिगन एंड वेन पार्लियामेंट बिगिन आई नो वॉट मेक्स हेडलाइंस एंड वॉट ग्रैब यूर अटेंशन इज एडजर्नमेंट नॉइस etc etc pandemonium that expression that the media has always like to use we never use it in our in our conversation with each other but beyond all that when parliament starts a lot of important things happen because what does parliament do it makes the laws and those laws then govern the country it's very important that's where policies are announced that's where policies are voted on most importantly that's where laws are voted on that's where constitutional amendments are voted on many of these laws before they are put to vote are sent to the committees the standing committee committees of relevant ministries and departments so that they can mps from various parties can look at these laws in a non partisan manner that's why in the standing committees there is no voting so a decision comes out which is the entire committee's decision so today today as this new session is begun monsoon session is begun we see that the standing committee on defense it has given its assent without seeking any amendments it's a committee headed by bjp mp jual oram it has given its assent fully fully without any amendments to a bill called the inter services organizations brackets command control and discipline bill 2023 now chances are i'm not sure but chances are that you may not see may not see it played a big time or in headlines in your newspapers tomorrow unlikely that there'll be many many hours even many minutes wasted in prime time discussions on this because a lot of the media most of the media will not give this bill that much importance because they will think this bill is not so important it is not so significant significant and you know what they will be right because this bill by itself is not that significant in the sense that it does not make so much difference at the same time you might ask me then why are you then featuring this bill for a whole episode of cut the clutter that's because this bill or this law by itself may not be so important but it indicates a major move forward in something else that is very important and that is going on and that is the theaterization of india's armed forces setting up of the theater commands so one of the issues what happens is that when you start when you start bringing about a major change particularly in the government system the legal issues come up first that you know if you create a new structure under what laws will this structure be governed so when you set up new structures in the government system in particular which laws will govern this structure so you have the army navy and air force each is governed by its own act so the army and the air force have the army act and the air force act as enacted in 1950 the navy has the navy act as enacted in 1957 now i will give you an example to help us understand how important this nitty gritty is you say look it's the same country's army navy air force people from the same same forces army navy air force will come and serve together in these theater commands so why should you need a new framework of law to deal with them even if they are disciplinary issues doesn't work like that in the government because there is the government there are the laws we are a country of the laws there are courts there is armed forces tribunal that's why that's why whenever a new organization is set up particularly in uniform forces this challenge comes up and i will take you back to understand this challenge better i will take you back to something that came up say in 1983 84 there about 1984 83 84 85 what happened around that time 1984 as we know operation blue star took place in operation blue star the army was in, in, involved that led to a lot of controversy the army itself uh, became very controversial faced a lot of criticism particularly from the sikh community the army itself saw many desertions in sikh units desertions rebellious activity this was a very dangerous and very embarrassing situation 
particularly for an army they, which is used to such great discipline. Now, at that point, political thinking was, and sensible political thinking, that maybe it wasn't such a good idea to employ the army as an institution to carry out an operation like Operation Blue Star. Now, there might have been justification to send some armed forces of the state in the Golden Temple to disarm Bhidra Bale and his people, but did the institution of the army have to do it? Because the army should be kept above controversy and army should be kept above partisanship. So that thought process led to the idea that India should create a new specialist counter-terrorist or specialist internal security force which is trained to the same level as not just the army but special forces of the army but should be seen as not a part of the army and that thought process led to the creation or the setting up of the National Security Guards so of what came to be known popularly as Black Cat Commandos. We've seen them operate in Akshardham, Gujarat, in Akshardham attack. We also saw them operate in the in, in 26-11 in Mumbai and many other operations. And they are now familiar with their black dangris. Now, when that uniform, new uniform force was coming up, the first idea came up. The first question was, under which ministry will this be positioned? So if you were going to position it under the Ministry of Defense, that will be seen as more or less like a part of the armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force. So then the idea was, although there was a tussle, and it was decided to keep it under the Home Ministry. Now, if it has to be under the Home Ministry, at the same time, it had to draw a lot of its personnel from the Army, particularly the Army Special Forces and initially for training, etc., and then other volunteers from the army who came, who would come in on deputation and also from central para paramilitary forces. Now, each one of these men and officers who were coming in from their individual organizations, they were subject to the laws of their own organizations. So under which legal framework will NSG function? So that became a debate now. So. Okay, it can't function under the Army Act because if it functions under the Army Act, then what is the difference between NST and the Army? The whole pretense and the idea was that it should not be confused with the Indian Army, which should not be involved as far as, far as possible in the internal, divisive, polarizing political challenges. Can it be governed by, say, the CRPF Act or the BSF Act? Once again, it will cause confusion. So, for that purpose, a new law was drafted. That was the NSG Act. So, once again, while you were planning this new anti-terrorism force, trying to figure out what their training will be, where they, uh, what their weapons will be, who will teach them tactics, should they be based on one of the British organizations, SBS or SAS, or should they be based on some American organization? Ultimately, a lot of the inspiration came from the German group, GSG 9, Rentschutz Group 9. At the same time, nitty gritty also had to be taken care of, a legal framework. And that's how people sat down and drafted this law called the NSG Act. Similarly, now you will have these new theater commands. These theater commands will draw people from Army, Navy, Air Force, not just the command headquarters, but this command will now order around in an operation, in a war. Unlikely, but a possible war, elements from Army, Navy, Air Force, all of them. Now, when they are involved in operations, which law will govern them, particularly when it comes to disciplining them? So what happens right now, India has a couple of integrated commands. For example, the oldest of them all is Andaman Nicobar Command, ANC, that was set up 22 years ago. Now, that has elements of Army, Navy and Air Force. Now, if if the commander there and that command is then held by the three services by rotations, Air Force has it now, Navy then, uh, to Army then, etc., etc., that cycle runs. Now the commander there may want to take action against somebody who is under operating under him in that command. Right now, by the way, we are using freely using the expression him instead of gender neutralizing it for the simple reason that at this point, and also not for the next many years, 
or we likely to have women officers rising to that rank. In the course of time, they will, now that more and more women are coming into operational areas, but not just now. That's why the laws also, even the new law that has just been drafted, which has been cleared by the standing committee, that also uses the same male pronoun. So what happens right now is, in the, in the, in, in the Andaman and Nicobar command, if the commander wants to take action against somebody, he cannot do so directly. He has to first return that person to his parent service. So if it's a Navy officer or, or, or a sailor or an Air Force officer or an airman or an army officer or, or, or a soldier or a jawan, he has to be returned to their parent force. And that parent force then carries out the disciplinary action because each individual in this case is subject to the laws of its parent organization. If that continues, then this idea of jointmanship, I'm sorry, but that again, again is an outdated, outdated expression. In the course of time, it will change. Right now, it is jointmanship. That militates against that idea because if you have to live together, fight, to get, fight together, win together, unfortunately, in some cases, die together, hopefully not, then you, you can't be governed by different laws, different laws for your discipline. So this new laws come in, it's not particularly different. It's the same in a sense as the Army Act, the Air Force Act, the Navy Act. But in this case, the theater commander, irrespective of which force the theater commander is, commander is from, the theater commander and, and under him, this theater can take disciplinary action against anybody posted in this theater under this new act. So once again, the act itself is not important. It is a repeat of the existing acts, but what it does, it does is it creates a formal structure for theater commands. Now, theater commands have been talked about for a very long time and we've been figuring out what will happen. There was a time when the idea first was being debated under General Bipin Rawat, when he was the chief, chief of defense staff, that there will be five theater commands. So the initial idea was to have five theater commands, that is Western, Northern, Eastern, a maritime command and an air defense com command. Now, if you, if you think hard, it would then look like it wasn't such a radical change because, because even now, operationally, the commands that, uh, commands that matter in India right now, operationally, are the Western command, Northern command, right? Those are, those are facing China and Pakistan and Eastern Command, again mostly facing China, right? And then Maritime Command is the Navy anyway. So, that, so what difference was being, being made except, except coalescing all the air defense resources in one place? That is something the Air Force did not like because they said that we have limited air defense resources anyway. Can you, can you, can you divide them in penny pockets? Do you really want to divide them in penny pockets? How do you know what threat will emerge where? Because even, even moving them from one, from one place to the other will be a big challenge. So that idea looks like it has now evolved. It has coalesced now into three theater commands. So what was meant to be five theater commands will now be three theater commands. The first theater command to come up will be headquartered at Jaipur. Jaipur is right now, Jaipur is a very large infrastructure for the armed forces. It is a fairly newly built command headquarters there, that is the Southwestern Command. So Southwestern Command, because all that infrastructure is available, that will become the Pakistan facing command, right? We don't have a name for it yet. That will become the Pakistan facing command. And that will draw in, that will draw, draw in the current elements under the Southwestern Army Command, which is headquartered in Jaipur, Southwestern Army Command, the Western Army Command, Southern Army Command, Southern Army, Army Command, a lot of its resources, it's right now based in Pune, a lot of its resources, you might think, oh, South May, who's the army fighting? A lot of its resources actually are employed traditionally in the southern sector of the India-Pakistan borders. That is towards the south of, that is towards the south of Punjab and down, down Rajasthan frontier and then going on to Gujarat, etc, etc. We have a very large frontier with Pakistan in that area. So, Southwestern Command, Western Command, Southern Command, and also some elements of the Northern Command will function under the new theater command that comes up at Jaipur. Now, the Northern Command will be a tricky thing. That's why no change is easy. Because the Northern Command, 
द सेम कमांड यूनिट्स एलिमेंट्स अंडर द सेम कमांड डील विद पाकिस्तान अक्रॉस द एल ओ सी दे डील विद इंसर्जेंसी विद इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड द सेम कमांड इन एलिमेंट्स अंडर द सेम कमांड ऑल्सो डील विद चाइना इन लद्दाख सो if you if you carry out a genuine theaterization then then elements under northern command will end up being divided between the jaipur command the pakistan facing command and the china facing command that i will t- t- tell you about in a second so these army elements that is the current southwestern western and southern commands and elements of northern command will go into the jaipur based pakistan facing theater command the name will know in the course of time from the iaf western and southwestern command western command is headquartered in delhi subrata park as you come out of delhi airport come towards the city you will pass it uh, that is that is western command western air command based in delhi southwestern air command based in gandhinagar right those two will be under the jaipur based pakistan facing theater command and also also there be elements of the air force or elements of the air power from central and southern commands central command is based in allahabad headquartered in allahabad and southern command is in trivandrum so all of this this will become a very powerful very large theater if you think this will this is large see what will happen with the china facing theater command which will be headquartered out of lucknow that will have the very large eastern army command under it it's a very large command with a lot of forces allocated and you know increasingly now indian armed forces are shifting emphasis towards the eastern frontiers also the eastern air command the resources of the eastern air command remember even the two squadrons of rafales that we have acquired india has acquired one is allocated to western air command based in ambala and the other is allocated to eastern air command based out of hashimara which is off north bengal that is not that far from sikkim or doklam or any of those regions or or if you look at the other end it is not that far from the arunachal sector as well so so all of the resources of eastern army command eastern air command i would presume that bulk of the resources resources of the central army and air force command because what are they looking at right now they are looking at again very sensitive borders that uttarakhand they face with with china and that's where also a couple of areas china china the chinese have raised disputes and again there is nepal so the china facing command will also be a very large one and then a third command will be a maritime command maritime command will then look at the entire seas the whole indo pacific in this case and they are not making a distinction between a pakistan front and a china front so they are looking at the oceans as one theater so they will be based in karwar in karnataka where a new base was built there was a lot of resistance environmental and otherwise when that base was being built almost 35 40 years ago but now that base is more or less built and that is where indian navy has its prime assets there's a lot of its stuff there and that's where the maritime command will be headquartered now the now the division of leadership will also be quite simple the first two commands that is the jaipur and lucknow based commands air force and the army will take turns at leading these so at any point of time one might be led by an air force officer one by an army officer and do, and they will take turns that is again to pr- promote joint manship the maritime command on the other hand necessarily will always be headed by a navy officer now already as things stand we have a bunch of inter services organizations led by very senior officers so i told you the first one was andaman and nicobar command which came up 22 years ago there is the strategic forces command defense space agency and institutions like nda and ndc national defense academy and national defense college these, these are inter services institutions where leadership is by rotation between army navy and air force there is also the integrated defense staff headquarters that works under the chief of defense staff so these organizations already exist now what will happen many other questions will arise that when these theater commands come up what will happen to the current commands northern command western command eastern command will they continue to exist that's for army navy air force 
what happens then to the army navy air force chiefs what will be their operational role for now it looks like they will be they will they will be they will be the apex authority as because they constitute the chief of staff committee that committee has army navy air force chiefs and the first among the equals there will be the chief of defense staff so each theater commander will report to that committee that as you can understand reporting to a committee may not be the best or the most ideal option in the long run right now that may be a good next step and the organization that supports the chief of staff committee is already in place that is the that is the integrated defense staff currently it's headed by lieutenant general johnson matthew nevertheless the situation we have right now is unsustainable unsustainable in case anything breaks out in the modern battlefield because the modern battlefield is very mobile very quick very high tech it's also very intelligentized and we are seeing this in ukraine because unless you are really sharp with all of this you will be run over in no time and that is what happened to russians to begin with because they brought so much fire power and so much muscle power and so much armor thinking that ukrainians will get scared and run away but once that did not happen and ukrainians were able to retaliate or hit back with intelligentized warfare specialist equipment the russians suffered very heavily and that's why war that they thought will be over in 72 hours has now gone on beyond 500 days so today's battlefield is very different in today's battlefield i think in one of my national interest articles i had said that in case something happens at doklam today i must have written it just after doklam 17 to 19 commands of indian armed forces will immediately have to get involved that is not something that can be sustained or that can sustain the modern battlefield so if you make a sim sim simple calculation the army and air force have seven commands each the navy has three commands that is that is 17 7 plus 7 plus 3 then there is andaman nicobar command 18 and the strategic forces command so that is 19 commands that's the reason that's the reason that shortly after the appointment of general bipin rawat as chief of defense staff he was given a mandate by the cabinet committee on security and that was a mandate for and i quote from that mandate it is also mentioned in one of snehe shalix philip stories in fact i am sharing three of his stories with you on this subject and that and that mandate said and i quote facilitation of restructuring of military commands for optimal utilization of resources by bringing about jointness in operations including through establishment of joint slash theater commands that idea has evolved for example the initial idea of setting up a separate air defense command that does not to, that does not seem to be in fashion anymore but it does look like these three theater commands will now come up and the clearing of this new law that is inter services organization command control and discipline bill 2023 hopefully or presumably it will become an act in this session of parliament that will be one significant step one more significant step and a substantive step in that direction because implicit in this will also be parliament's approval and its stamp on authority on the new theaterization plan